Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how to connect the ESP32 to the AWS cloud services and send BMP sensor data to their MQTT broker. So let's get started. In order to do this project, you'll need the ESP IDF BMX280 library, the ESP AWS IoT framework used to connect the ESP32 to the AWS. You just press here, code, download, and you should download it in the IDF environment over here to components. The next thing you'll need is the expressive QR code component in order to generate the QR code to provision the ESP32. And the last one is the JSON library from Enloman. I have already shown you this library. The only file you need to download is this single include json.hpp. Also, you'll need to create an AWS account. So search on Google AWS Cloud Computing Services, the first link. And you need to sign into the console over here. If you don't have an account, just create one as a root user. You need the email address and the password. Before continuing with this project, I would like you guys to join my free school community, which is related to embedded systems and electronics mainly focused on Internet of Things. You can see here many articles such as who is this community for, a quick introduction of myself and many other articles such as how to create a user interface. Also, by using this platform, you will be able to directly contact me and have one-on-one -on -one calls with me. You will find the link in the description section. Let's get started. Let me show you the pinout first. I'm going to be using the BMP280 with the SCL connected to pin 22 and SDA connected to pin 21 and SDO connected to ground. These are the header files that we will need in this project. And make sure you have installed the json.hpp file, the expressive QR code and the BMX20 libraries, and the ESP AWS IoT as well. Now go to Services, IoT Core, and in order to connect the ESP32 to the AWS services, you need to create a thing, which represents a software representation of the hardware. So go here, connect device, Press next, create new thing, and you have to enter the thing name. I'm going to be saying AWS ESP. Now press next, press Windows. The SDK doesn't matter for now, so I'm going to be choosing Python. And now you need to download some certificates related to the connection to the ESP32. So click here, download connection kit, press next. Press continue and press view thing. Now you need to change the policy of the thing. So go in the left side, security, policies, AWS ESP policy, edit active version, press JSON. And you need to paste this. I leave this in the comment section. Now press save as new version and everything is set up. Open the terminal and create a new folder in which you will restore the certificates. Now you will need to unzip the certificates package into this folder. So go back to your downloads, right click, extract, and you have to go to your project directory. In my case, it's this. Press extract. Now you will need to change the name of these two certificates. So change this to client.crt and change this AWS ESP private key to client key. Now you need to download the Amazon root certificate with this command, which will download it from the GitHub repository with this name root cert of that CRT. Press enter. Now go to your CMake lists from the root directory and make sure you add these commands, which will add the components from the ESP AWS IoT library. And make sure you add these commands as well. Target add binary data, which will take these certificates and will directly store them inside the executable file. So now I'll explain you the code. So we have here the BMX280 object, the task handle for the MQTT task handle, 
the topic which is sensor reading, the thing name in our case it is AWS ESP. For that username you can set any string. I'm going to set it as user. And now you need to assign a value to the endpoint. The endpoint represents the address of the AWS server. You can find it here in start.ps1 file in the tmp directory. This is the endpoint, so copy it and paste it like this. Now we have here the buffer used to transmit the data via MQTTT, the variables for the sensor, the network context, which represents the certificates and the endpoint, the transport interface contains the functions for, used for sending and receiving via MQTT, the connect info which calls AWS credentials such as AWS ESP and user, we have here the MQTT publish info T which contains published data, the network buffer which is the buffer used to send data, and the MQTT context which is related to the MQTT communications which holds previous packets and timestamps. A queue handle for the sensor data because we will be using the Artos environment we will have a task that is constantly reading the sensor data and sending via a queue to another task. Now we have here the char pointers to the certificates. We have here assembly commands which are just uh, linker symbols which hold the start and the end of every certificate. Because why would we do that? Well, if you look here in the certificate it's pretty obvious that we cannot store that directly as a string into the project because that would be too complicated. So we have to store it directly into the executable. Now we have here the function MQTT subscribe to, which subscribes to a certain topic, the print QR code, which prints the QR code for provisioning, the Wi-Fi provisioning handler. I have already shown you this process in the last video, so go check it out. We have the provisioning initializer, which takes care of whether the ESP32 is already provisioned or not. We have the I2C initialization, which initializes the I2C in order to communicate with the BMP280 sensor. We have the sensor read, which reads sensor data from the BMP280 and sends it via a queue. You can see it over here, it reads as float stores it into a buffer and then sends it via a queue. We have the initialization of the BMP280. And here, the most interesting part, the MQTT event callback. This callback will be called whenever an MQTT related event will trigger. So if we receive data, the MQTT packet type publish event will be triggered and we'll be able to read the published data. Now we have here the MQTT process task which with the function MQTT process loop is looking for any new published data. And now we're basically sending the temperature, pressure and humidity in JSON format to the MQTT broker with the MQTT publish. Now we have the function connect to AWS. We have the XTLS connect, which establishes a TLS connection with the AWS server. We have the MQTT connect function, which sends a connect to the MQTT broker from the AWS. And now we have the xtask create command, which just creates the MQTT process task. Here we have the event handler for the Wi-Fi events. And here we initialize the Wi-Fi. This is the main user task. And here we initialize the AWS. So for the network context, which as I have already told you, it holds the certificates and the endpoint. So we have here the endpoint, the port, we have the semaphore because this library is working with the semaphore, then the pointer to a TLS structure, we don't need one. You can see here the start of the certificate and the length, which is just the end minus the start. And we're doing the same for the rest of the fields. Here related to transport, we're just taking. Here related to receive and send, these are just a pointer to some functions from ESP-IDF for sending and receiving data via MQTT. Here we have the buffer used and here related to MQTT, whether this is a clean session, yes, a client identifier, team name, and so on. Here we're using MQTT quality of service zero, meaning that, meaning that the ESP32 will not wait for an acknowledgement. Here we initialize the MQTT and here's the main function. We're just setting the log level, we're creating a queue and initialize the sensor and Wi-Fi. So build a program. All right, it's built successfully. Now flash the program onto the board. 
open the terminal it's already provisioned now it will be initializing the mqtt i will open aws website again select the topic sensor reading subscribe i should see here the temperature pressure and humidity if i put a finger onto the sensor the temperature should increase Yeah, now let's see if we can send something from AWS to the ESP32. So go here to publish, select the topic to slash read, press enter, and the message will be message, hello, I am AWS, press publish. And you should see here, hello, I am AWS. So that's pretty much it. Today you have learned how to connect ESP32 to the AWS cloud services. Write down below in the comment section what you're thinking in the project and what you'd like me to be doing in the future. I will see you guys later.